Today I'm in Jakarta, Indonesia, and I want to share with you a whole new concept in technical analysis. I'm announcing it at the International Federation of Technical Analysts annual conference, and I'm speaking about it here today, but I want to give you a sneak preview um, of this whole new idea in this first chart today using this new idea. Okay, so I'm back in my hotel room, uh, and this is the first chart today that I've recorded for a few weeks. Um, in the run-up to announcing this whole new concept in technical analysis. So this is traditionally the screen that I would have used in charts today. Uh, you'd be looking at six charts and I'd run down the list um, and we'd get all the trends and targets by uh, looking at the charts. And I'd have these six charts really telling me what was going on. And people found this um, you know, quite confusing to get their heads around for the first time. And what we've effectively done is we've taken these targets and we've put them on uh, line charts or candle charts, time-based charts, for the very first time. Uh, we've been working on this for a, a several months, uh, and it's been in beta, uh, and we're launching this to our clients uh, at the beginning of next week. So um, these are the targets, and basically they're generated in the same way the point-and-figure targets are. You've got a lot more um, scope to um, look at uh, you know, the various settings, but the key thing is they project into the future on a line chart. So this is my daily and my 60 minute chart. I do keep a weekly down here as well. So this is the uh, long-term chart with a 1% uh, um, unit size. And if I really recommend that you watch the IFTA video um, that I'll be putting out so you can get a real handle on how these work. But running through charts today now, it's a whole new concept. So we can uh, take a look here. So we see here the euro. And the interesting thing is that you don't always get targets now because, uh, of course, you have to go right the way back to see where the targets were. And that's the interesting thing. So looking at these targets, you can see where they were given. Uh, and these, are when they're in bold, uh, they're still in train. Uh, when they're lighter, and, and these settings are all set up uh, in the system so you can configure the appearance and you can see up and down at uh, non-activated targets as well. So it, it really is um, a whole new way of, of looking at uh, price targets. So we could look at, uh, so we can go right through. So we look at the, the NASDAQ, we look, this is the S&P mini. We see this was the thrust. This is the activation level. That was the target given. And what we see here is really quite interesting. What we're finding with these targets, and the beta program has really brought this out, is not only can we project in forward in time, but you can also start to see when targets are failing or starting to fail. So it's really interesting that this was the price target. We didn't quite get there. And then a new downside target. And this is the target that's in train at the moment on the daily chart. Here we see on the 60-minute chart, this target was given and nearly met probably as good you can say was met this this target was given here that was the time and it's that's the beauty of these these targets now on time based charts so really really um, a whole new way of thinking and, and really powerful. Uh, and if we look at some of uh, the other things that are going on, so if we look at gold, uh, and you can, of course, do this for any um, chart you like. Um, we take a look here at the daily chart. We had this upside target that was given. If we look at the, uh, the long-term chart on gold, we see here, this is an unactivated target. That's why it's in orange. We need to break above that level, uh, which is about 2043, before we activate this upside target. And then we'll see the price and the percentage all on it. But the key thing is this target isn't happening until we break higher. That's the long-term picture in gold. And if we look at the medium term, this is the daily chart, we see this target was given off this low, nearly met. This is a half percent unit. Um, you can, of course, do um, arithmetic as well. And here we see another target given, but then these new targets kicking in. And that's on the daily. And then if we go to the 60-minute chart, again, really interesting that we saw that move. This move has been exceeded. We've got a little mini upside move not yet activated. So for the moment, we're not really looking at that target. And you'll notice a lot of the targets were that were given historically, you now start to think, well, they were given a while ago. Um, do, we, do they really count? We take a look at um, 
look at US 10 year yields. Um, here we see uh, really interesting that we've got these upside targets given, um, and that's really, really strong. So here we had back in August when yields were at 4%, we got this activation. This was the thrust. That was the thrust that gave that target. We then activated over here, target of 4.79%. 4, 4 Hard to believe at the time, uh, and that's where that was met. And on the 60-minute chart, when you see these train tracks, uh, this is really, really compelling when you see multiple targets all pointing up in the same target area. And again, I talk about that in the IFTA um, presentation as well. And if we look at the uh, the weekly uh, targets, uh, what's interesting here is if we look at those weekly targets, um, we see here that uh, we are running – right into the future, into 2028, 10.5%. So uh, for some people, that just seems incredible and unbelievable. But that's that's where we are. So really quite key there. Um, so if we take a look at some of the other things that are going on, Apple, um, you know, of course, the, the biggest stock in the US stock market, we see here, we've got this downside target, uh, we had this upside target that was given and met. Uh, and so that's really, really interesting. That was the target given back at the beginning of this year. And that's the train. We had multiple targets. That's where we got to. Then we had this downside targets given, again, pointing on the same train. And this is the train that Apple's on at the moment. Below the cloud, I've lightened my lagging line so you can actually see what's going on. Um, a little bit more clearly, but really interesting. And then, of course, if we look at the 60-minute chart, we see here the tussle that's been going on, these downside targets being given. That's where the price is going. Got a little mini upside target at the moment, but we're still below the cloud, and we haven't activated this orange target yet. So it's really interesting to watch that. And, of course, you can go to shorter time frames as well. If we take a look at the longer-term chart for Apple, uh, it may well be that we will get to this $270 price point. We've got another one here, but at the moment, this is the target that's really in train. So the long-term picture is a little bit different, and that's the interesting thing about resolving these. We take a look at Microsoft. I can do this on any stock, of course, and we see here this. we've got this strong upside target, but for the moment, the shorter-term downside targets are dominating. This one yet not activated, this orange one. This one uh, has been met, and so we see that's a that's a, a chief target. And you can actually um, set your settings to show um, unactivated, even negated targets. So you can uh, easily do that. But we see here that's the train that's going on. And we can do this for any stock you like, uh, any currency, anything. Uh, so we look at Tesla. Really interesting picture here with Tesla. We've got an upside target and downside target. Sort of a, a, a symmetrical triangle going on. Just shows us that the, the picture is not really very clear on Tesla on that medium and short-term chart. The long-term chart, we've got this stellar target here. We've got another target, still conflicting picture. If we make new highs, then we activate a new target, and suddenly we've got a train track. So we're starting to find that that's quite interesting. I, of course, I also cover energy. Um, and a lot of people trading energy will want to look at these targets. If we look at Brent crude, uh, we see here again, really interesting. We've made these new highs recently in Brent. We've had a little bit of a pullback. That's the level that we have to break to activate the target. We can do the same for WTI. Um, we see here, this is a little bit clearer. Upside targets activated, really quite interesting there. So um, that's really key. And, but we do have these downside targets in train. And if I look at something like emissions, um, again, you can do this on any chart you like. So we've got the, a very interesting long-term targets here um, on emissions. But the interesting thing is that the short term is dominating at the moment. These downside targets are really playing in. And of course, you can do this on very short term charts as well. This is a one minute chart. So this is just literally the last few days. These are all the downside targets given as the price is thrusting lower. Today, we've got some new upside targets here on emissions. And it's just a case of following that track and watching that. So really quite fascinating. These targets launch next week to our clients. Um, but I thought I'd share it with you for the first time in a while and charts today. So uh, hopefully you will find these really useful to use uh, and a very um, valuable addition in Updata. Thanks for watching.